Welcome back to the Bruja Cat channel. This time I have a special guest. It's my cat, the actual Bruja Cat. Say hello, Stormy. <laughs> Hi, Stormy. Stormy wants you to subscribe or she will bite you. Ah, you're so high up. What are you looking at? What you looking at, kitty? So today is part three where we're going to be talking about limpiezas. So in this video, I'm going to talk about fire limpiezas or limpiezas de fuego and other miscellaneous sort of limpiezas that you can do. So since this is part three in a video series, make sure you go check out the first and second videos first. So in this video, we're actually going to talk about limpiezas de fuego or fire limpiezas, fire cleansing rituals and other miscellaneous rituals that are uh, very unique to Latin America specifically. So I'm going to be reading off of my list here. So first we have tobacco. This is from the indigenous community. Um, before the Spanish arrived, they used tobacco for many cleansing rituals. Um, and then we also have palo santo and incense. So palo santo is sort of like a fragrant piece of wood. This here! So that's what it looks like. So, like the indigenous people of North America, also Latin America has a tendency of using sage or um, palo santo or different sorts of incense. Um, they can use it in abalone shells, but um, some tribes also use coconut shells. And also as a quick disclaimer, um, a lot of white sage is actually being marketed and uh, diminishing the population of farms, indigenous farms. So make sure that whatever you use is going to be uh, humanely sourced wherever it is that you get it from. You can uh, ask medicine men from your local tribe if they have any medicine that you can use if you are in need of smudging or um, any sort of uh, ritual cleansing that requires sage or palo santo also because it is a piece of wood the timber for it is actually causing it to uh, become an endangered species of wood. So make sure that whatever it is that you use for your cleansing rituals is not going to be harmful for the environment or harmful for any native tribes. So next on my list is charcoal and hot coals. So people will use these charcoal and hot coals to sort of um, read and do divination for the smoke as a form of pyromancy. Um, and then they'll use that smoke to sort of cleanse you of um, any sort of maldades or whatever sort of things are uh, influencing you. We also have the process of burning, which is uh, writing on a piece of paper or leaves. Sometimes it's bark, uh, basil leaves, uh, what have you, whatever it is that you have in store or in stock. Sometimes people will use birch bark um, because it's sort of like a form of paper for different indigenous tribes. Um, they'll write letters to themselves, they'll write things that they want to get rid of in their lives as a form of uh, warding or banishment, and then they'll burn that piece of paper or leaf as a form of cleansing. Um, it's sort of like cutting off ties, um, diminishing, burning, and getting rid of something which also leads into bonfires or bone fires, as it was originally termed through etymology. So uh, bone fires sort of started as a way to give offerings which are burnt, um, and because it was a ceremony, it was done with many people, um, with the village or maybe like your coven, small circles such as your family, whoever it was that was involved would uh, come around, dance around the fire, you would do certain performances, singing, dancing, what have you, for the certain ritual or ceremony. So different offerings, um, ofrendas would be given to the fire, and um, it doesn't have to involve deities specifically, it can be offerings to yourself. So these can be things that you also want to get rid of that you can give into a bonfire or bonfire as a way of burning. Next we have candles, which are basically the most versatile, um, they're the most customizable form. You can use them as a barrier, they can create a circle of protection. Um, you can do divination from uh, dripping wax. Um, there's different things that you can do through burning candles. Um, you can do um, all sorts of divination using the wax. Um, you can drip them into water and then read them that way. Um, you can drip them onto yourself, um, as, as long as you're doing this safely, of course. Um, and they can be used as a form of aromatherapy, so that can be also therapeutic and cleansing in itself. 
Next up, and this is sort of related to charcoal or hot coals, we have sweating, which can be done through steam, uh, coals, dances, or exercise. Uh, you can get into a trance, you can get into a sweat box. Um, I know a lot of indigenous tribes will do um, sweat boxes as a form of um, sort of a trance work or ritual. Uh, it's sort of like a rite of passage for people where you uh, sort of get a vision. Uh, this can be led by mentors, different ancestors, whatever sort of vision that you can have. Um, so that's another layer onto this where uh, sweating can be uh, a sort of ritual or rite of passage for people, but sweating can also be a release for different sorts of paths. So uh, what that means is that if you get into a trance-like state, you can dance and do exercise and release whatever you need to cleanse through sweating. So this can be done also when you're sick, uh, you know, you're trying to sweat out your um, cold or your flu, whatever it is that you have, um, you're trying to sweat out the, the virus. So that's another form of cleansing as well, cleansing through sweat. And the last on the list of limpiezas de fuego, fire cleansing, is through the sun. So the sun itself has lots of energy, it pours it down to us. So soaking in the sun and absorbing its rays into your skin to sort of recharge and cleanse yourself. And this can also be another form of uh, cleansing through sweating. You know, if you get um, those hot rays, that vitamin D through your skin, you're also perspiring, you're sweating, so that can be a form of cleansing in itself also. So the sun can be very useful in that. And now for the list of miscellaneous limpiezas. So first up, we have the most iconic one, the barrida. So this is pretty much like a witch's broom. Um, I have a little example here. This is more of a traditional kind of broom. They're not very large. You can use regular brooms that you can get at the grocery store that you clean with your house regularly. You can use those. Um, this is more of a traditional one. They're usually about the length of your arm. Um, it's very mobile. You want it to be flexible so you can get up into high spaces, into the corners of your house, and they basically will cleanse the area of any bad energy, whatever things you want to remove from your space. You can do this in your household, you can do this in different spaces as well if you want to cleanse them. You can customize these however you like. This one is particularly made out of cedar. Um, cedar has many properties to it that are um, really great for making tea actually, and they're really uh, good for your immune system. But um, Many indigenous tribes also believe that cedar is a sort of good plant. It's like a plant of wisdom and of protection. Next up, we have huevos, which I see very much online being done incorrectly. So I highly, highly suggest if you are not aware of how to do cleansing limpiezas by using huevos, por favor, just get an actual brujo, get an actual practitioner from Latin America to do it for you instead of doing it incorrectly. Otherwise, like, what did the chicken lay that egg for? <laughs> Actually, huevos are used mainly for pregnant women by parteras. So if you're pregnant or something, they will use the egg, they'll rub it on your belly, they'll rub it all over you, and it'll sort of determine um, some good luck for the baby. It'll determine what sort of baby it'll be, you know, like the gender of the sex of the baby. Um, and it'll also deter the evil eye, Maleojo, from that baby. Um, if you have any illness during your pregnancy, it'll sort of get rid of that also. Um, what I understand from my research is that Parteras will take this egg after rubbing it all over you and absorbing that energy. They will place it not cracked within a glass of water and put it under your bed and then as you sleep, sometimes people will do this within a 24 hour period, sometimes they'll do much longer, like three days, um, several weeks maybe, and then that's when they'll take the egg and they'll crack it into the water and then read it as a form of divination. And then that water is um, thrown out. You want to do that outside. Um, you do not want to drink this water. Um, it's because it's been absorbing all this negative energy. You want to get rid of that water. Seriously, do not do this. If you are not skilled, if you don't know how to do it properly, find someone that does. 
Okay, so next we have trans work, which I touched on a little bit before. Um, so a lot of this can be customizable depending on the ritual or ceremony that you're trying to do. Uh, trans work is a sort of hypnotic state or trance that you can get yourself into in order to open up the mind, open up your spirit to receiving messages or receiving visions. So again, this can be led by a mentor, this can be led by your ancestors, uh, sometimes it can be led by whichever deity or patron that you're working with. Um, a lot of the times, um, sometimes you can use hallucinogenics, alcohol, hypnosis, dance, or meditation in order to get into a trance-like state. Next up on miscellaneous link BSS, we have exorcism. So as a word of caution, this is why we do platicas first to see and to determine if this is the appropriate action. However, I am going to list this in uh, miscellaneous link BSS because it is possible um, there are different paths that do do exorcisms. An exorcism may not always be a literal demon or evil entity, evil spirit that is possessing someone. Sometimes it can be an obsession with someone. It can be a psychological sort of exorcism, sort of like an intervention that you're doing with this person. So it may not be taken as literally as you might see from the exorcist. Next we have music and dance. I personally think this is probably the most fun way of doing a limpieza. Um, it's definitely the most customizable or one of the most customizable ways of doing this because of the unique way that you can do music, that you can do song and dance. Uh, you can do this personally on your own. You can find a song that resonates with you. It doesn't always have to be so formal. You can use songs that you've heard on the radio as a form of uh, self-cleansing. You know, they can make you feel good. Happy songs just make you feel happy. Um, there are also songs like hymns that you can use. Uh, for example, the Book of Psalms um, can be used as a form of cleansing as well. Um, you can use all sorts of different instruments. For example, you can use a tambourine. You can use you can use maraca. You can use guiros. Cuatros. This is not in tune. All kinds of musical instruments and then uh, the dances can also be as customizable and diverse uh, there's a huge variety of dance in Latin America of course we're kind of famous for it um, but particularly in Puerto Rico I know about um, Bomba y Plena so that can be used ceremonially as well and it comes from our African and indigenous roots um, mixed in with some Spanish music as well so clay can kind of be used as like body paint. I know a lot of indigenous tribes, uh, the Tainos will use clay in order to like use as body paint, but also as a form of cleansing in itself. Next we have fasting. So fasting is a sort of way of cleansing the body. In order to enter a sacred space, you have to do fasting. Um, this sort of leads into the previous limpieza that I talked about um, where you're vomiting. Um, Tainos would use a vomit stick in order to cleanse their bodies. This can also be done through fasting. And many uh, different cultures have different variations of fasting where you're allowed to fast um, during the day and you can eat at night or you can only fast uh, drinking water. Um, so it very much depends on which culture, which type of fasting. Next on my list, uh, we have a form of bloodletting. So this is a sort of uh, ritualistic ceremony or used for initiations where people will do small incisions or cuts. Um, I am not recommending this to anyone who is not an expert in their path. So if you are not a mentor, a don, doña, tata, a priest or priestess, if you're not someone who is high ranking in your practice or in your path, I do not recommend this to anyone, but I thought it was a unique practice, um, a unique sort of limpieza to Latin America. Another sort of unique cleansing ritual is the Devil's Club. Uh, this sort of originates in North America, um, but I'm not going to limit my channel to only talking about Latin America. I want to talk about um, witchcraft and all sorts of different spiritual practices in the whole of America. Even though I sort of uh, specialize in Latin America, I do want to discuss different forms as well. So a devil's club is a unique tool whose main purpose is to tear up and ward away evil. Um, so this can mean evil spirits, evil entities, evil devils, or if someone is trying to hex you, it can sort of ward them away as well. Um, traditionally, this is made out of uh, rose thorns, but it can also be any sort of 
thorny, um, spiky kind of bush. Um, it's typically um, shorter in length, maybe about 12 inches at most, the length of your arm perhaps. Um, and it's mentioned a lot in sort of Appalachia, um, by the Ozark, in that sort of region. Devil's clubs can also be made out of bougainvillea, devil's crown, hawthorn, or other prickly thorny bushes. Next on our list we have banishing powder. So this is sort of like creating a salt barrier. It creates a barrier or a casting circle of banishment where it completely neutralizes any sort of magic, including your own. So if you're just trying to neutralize a space, if you're going to try to stop your own spell work, you're regretting what you did, you want to completely let's stop everything, then you can use banishing powder. Um, this is traditionally made out of sulfur and asafoetida. Um, they are ubiquitously used as well as cascarilla powder in the Latin American practices. So cascarilla powder is basically you're taking up eggshells after you crack the egg. You take the eggshells, you clean them up as best as you can, um, you can boil them as well, and then you crush them in your little pilon. And then um, from that, you can get your, ban your, your banishing powder, your cascarilla. Uh, these are sold in Puerto Rico, as I know it, into these little uh, ketchup cups, like little ketchup packets, and they'll uh, put like a little lid over them, and so they can sell them by like 25 cents, 50 cents each of little cascarilla powder. And then lastly, on my list, I have the old confession, sacrament, and Eucharist found in Catholicism. Because a lot of witches from Latin America are not pagan and in fact form some of the largest population of Christian witches, a lot of them still revere Catholicism. Uh, they still pray to, venerate saints, uh, they give different offerings or ofrendas to them. They can invoke angels. Um, so Catholicism is not looked down upon, Christianity is not looked down upon for most of the Latin American community. Um, so because of this, confession, sacrament, and Eucharist is still a form of limpieza, it's still a form of cleansing and blessing for people in Latin America. And so a unique form of this is oracionistas. So these are witches that are specifically uh, praying for the healing of people. So they will pray to angels, they will pray to God, they'll pray to uh, whoever, whichever saint, they'll pray in the name of Jesus in order to help heal you. And that is the full list that I have written down for different sort of limpiezas. So we talked about uh, fuego or fire limpiezas. We talked about all sorts of miscellaneous types of limpiezas. Um, let me know if there's any that I missed. Um, I tried to make as extensive as a list as I possibly could uh, and going into description for each one. Um, but of course, I'm sure that there is plenty of them out there. So if there's any that you know that are unique to Latin America, then uh, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions at all, please let me know and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I do list off any references, so any books that I'm sourcing in the description as well. And then of course I have my link tree to my TikTok and Instagram too, if you want to follow me on those social medias. Thanks for watching. Bye! Hold on tight! You having fun? I'm having fun. <laughs>